Hi everyone, I'm Carmen. I'm just here to show you how to use a budgeting template that you would have received as a part of your Farm Budget Masterclass Workshop. It's just a simple Excel template. A template means that some of the information has already been preloaded and some of the formulas have been preloaded, allowing you to save a little bit of time and concentrate on entering the figures that are correct for your business. So we're going to start off making some changes to this little spreadsheet and we're going to call our farm Kyora. We just press enter and that moves us down to the next cell. This is for the period January to December 2019 and we'll leave that however you can type over it. Now it's also important to remember everything in this budget for this template has got to be entered GST exclusively for the formulas to work correctly. Now if you wanted to change it to June to July you could just change, sorry July to June, you could just change the names of the months across the top. We've got here that um, most of them are well, three months of actuals and then the remainder of budget which would take you through from the beginning of the calendar year which is potentially in your region the beginning of the cropping year through to the end of harvest. Uh, if you wanted to start off and you're preparing this budget nice and early you could actually do the full year of budget and just change the names of the cells. If you were using actuals for the first couple of months of the year you would just type in something that you had from a cash flow recording system and just making sure that they were GST exclusive. So we're going to add just a few details in here to start with. So we're just assuming that there's some carryover income, some wheat sold in January and then a little bit more in February. We don't have to enter the commas, they're just preloaded for us so that's great. And then we're hoping for a little bit of early canola money in here and some wheat money or barley or something in December. Okay, just ignore the figures. They might be bigger or smaller than what they are for your business. Um, just add whatever's right for you is right for you. Just ignore that. Now what might need changing however is the enterprises. So over here we've got some information for lambs and cull ewes. You might have cows or sorry you might have steers that you sell and cull cows and you can just enter that in there. If you had some more enterprises you could just click on here, click on the 16 there, click on the bottom, add insert and that will add a row and you can put your alpacas in here. Very profitable the alpacas, providing a consistent income of $1,000 a month. All the way across here. Now we've done that by finding that little square there on the corner that comes up and dragging that entry all the way across there. Now you'll see here these total columns with the blue shading add the information up automatically across the row. So Excel works a little bit like Battleship. Each cell is an individual reference. This cell that's got the green on it here is D12. Okay, these cells here in the pale blue have got a formula within them. And this one, you can see up here in the formula line, says this cell is equal to the sum, so the total of the cells D9 all the way through to O9. This cell here for the alpacas is blank, okay, because we added that row and the formula wasn't in there. What we can do is copy the formula from the row above. We look for that little square, we put our mouse on it, and we just drag that down. And great, we see making $12,000 a year from the alpacas. Now this spreadsheet will automatically calculate the GST, not with accurate accountant endorsed precision mind you, because there's little things like registration, little things like fees and charges, some of which have GST on them and some of which don't. Just a good broad brush approach to budgeting the GST so you don't get to the end of the quarter and go, goodness me, we now owe $30,000 to the ATO that we had forgotten about entirely. So not accurate entirely, but good enough in terms of for your cash flow budgeting, not good enough for reporting for your BAS. Okay, so just keep that well in mind. Now 
some things obviously don't have GST on them. Over here we're putting $40,000 of off farm, or perhaps a farm management deposit we've put in there, cashed in, $40,000 in there and it won't change our GST calculation along there. Now the other things that you need to think about when you're updating this spreadsheet are the cells marked in yellow. So we're trying not to touch the ones in blue. The ones in blue are our formula cells and they should have been pre-formatted so we don't actually touch them. Now the ones in yellow, however, we just have to update with our information. So this is our opening balance. So our opening balance is the money for this spreadsheet, the money we have in the bank on the 1st of January. Okay, this business has got $120,000 in the bank. The situation were different and there was a $50,000 overdraft or $50,000 drawn on an overdraft. We would put negative there, indicating it's a loan, $50,000. We'd also have to update our bank interest received and our bank interest paid. So if your overdraft has got an interest rate of 5%, you just put 5.5 there. You don't have to do a negative and you don't have to enter the percentage because that's preloaded in the template. The other figure that you'll have to change here is this one, which is your opening GST balance. So working on this January to December timeframe, the end of the last quarter, December, you owed $5,000 to the ATO, you would put $5,000 in there. If you were expecting some money back from the ATO, so a GST refund, just say a GST refund of $12,000, enter that figure in there. Okay, and it's updated. Um, now, the other thing you might need to know about is removing some lines. Okay, so over here, let's see, employee costs. You might not have any employees in your business and you might want to take that out. So we've got in here some lines, 73 down to 78. So we can take that and we can just press the delete button and that will delete that. But you see it leaves all the cells and we don't want to get rid of those. So we press our cursor on the 73, scroll that down to there, and then we can press the right hand mouse click button and delete all of those cells. Okay, so now we no longer have um, employee costs in this template. So once you go through and enter all of your figures, it's important to delete the figures that aren't, the rows, oh sorry, yeah, rows for the certain expense categories that aren't relevant to you. So if you don't have cattle, take those out. If you've got alpacas, type over the top and leave them there. It's easiest to leave that until the end and I'll do another little video on how to actually tidy things up and present them ready for your bank or application to the Rural Assistance Authority for a loan or whatever you want to use them for, meeting with the other members of your partnership just to present where you're up to for that year. Um, we enter our drawings and tax in here also, personal use expenses and they're categorised differently because we can't claim the GST back on those. Um, if you have a look down here, you then see your forecasted bank balance. So this assumes that with these payments and these receipts, in May, we have a closing balance of $34,000. The spreadsheet also automatically calculates the interest that you would receive, so that's added in there as income. And if you have an overdraft, calculates the interest that you'd pay. Now it culminates in this nice little graph, which shows you that you're starting off down here in January and happily by the end of the year, an increased bank balance. Now, as you're well aware, uh, increasing cash flow is a great thing, or increasing cash over the 12 month period, but because this is a cash system, it doesn't account for other investment type decisions that you might make. So you might end up in a negative cash position year in, year out, but if you're paying off loans, if you're investing in your business, if you're buying additional stock or restocking livestock or um, increasing the areas of pasture which have had to have been taken out of a cropping cycle, you might actually have a negative cash balance year on year. So don't despair too much. Cash is only one measure of business profitability and it's probably the least accurate in lots of ways. So have a go at putting your own information in there. Um, hopefully it's of some help to you. 
and then when you've got to the stage where you need to tidy things up to present them a little bit better, uh, have a look at the second video. Thank you for your time.